This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Hey everybody, welcome to the Church of Tone. Highway Jones in the Temple of Tones. I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just waiting time for the, uh, the credits to go through so I can get to the next part. Um, are they gone? Okay, I think we're good. Uh, so well, I saw this video by uh, Johan Sageborn. Hi, let's go. And I was like, oh yeah, I gotta have one of them. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this thing into a Fender 6G3 brown face deluxe clone type deal. We got this uh, crusty old crate on the bench. And the reason why we use donor amps like this is because uh, to buy a chassis and a cabinet, a good quality one, it's going to cost you like three, four hundred bucks. Um, at least the sources that I can find. If anyone has a better source for inexpensive yet good quality cabinets and chassis, uh, let us all know down in the thing. Uh, but yeah, we uh, have successfully built a blackface Deluxe clone. What else have we built? We built a uh, Tweed Deluxe clone out of a uh, Grom's little gem, little jewel, whatever it was. Well, there you have it. The purple one we did. We did one of them. We built kind of a deluxe type thing of our own design. That was the Prince of Darkness. That's a cool one. You should watch that video. That's a great little lamp, too. Uh, what else did we do? Did we do any more deluxes? How many more are there? I don't know. We need to add a brown face to our pantheon of deluxes. All right. So, um... That's what we're going to do. I'm going to build a clone from scratch with off-the-shelf parts. If that sounds interesting to you, uh, hang tight. Here we go. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is tear this sucker apart. And there's not much to see. Just unscrew, unbolt, undo everything. And, um, yeah. I'll catch back up with you once all that's done. Alright, here we go. Yeah, how do you like that camera angle? I'll give you some action shots. Just... To uh, keep the action going. In the background, we got Fran Cap entertaining us as we work. One of the all time greats. The song In My Dreams. Talking about uh, guitar solos really from the 80s. Oh. Super hits. These screws are really in there. Few minor I usually don't use the electric yeah, drill on this stuff, but we're tearing this apart, so. We don't care if we strip the heads. Oh my god, what in the hell? This song, because it's my Holy. Especially. With the solo, it's the song in my dreams, right. which follows along pretty good with the Dawkins stories. Dawkins, we're rocking with Dawkins. Oh Jesus! For the nightmare on Elm Street, I think we're rocking with Loctite on this. Oh smokes! This up. Mm. Was this supposed to be the song right. see how we did. for Nightmare on Elm Street? Uh, oh, Dream Warriors. Passed on it along the way. I can't George stand Dawkins. <laughs> Pretty bold statement. Sorry, Ryan. All just like you perfectly crafted. All right, yeah. We're and screwing. You've seen one screw, you've seen them all. Uh, little compositions. All right, so if you were wondering, that's what that looks like. A little protector thingy here. Some beefy ass corners. I'll tell you what, crate doesn't get much love, but they, you know. Do put them together. I can definitely say that they do put them together. All right, got two off. We got like six more to go. All right, we got the chassis out. 
we have the obligatory spider webs. Can you see that? Look like the friggin' spider was still alive. No, no just a little bit of air. All right, let's see what we got. Hopefully we can see what's going on in here. Um, these op amps, there's a whole bunch of 4558s. Got some transistors. Uh, you probably be able to read them better than me. If I can get some light on it, which I don't think I can. Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible, Tom Priest. What you doing? Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to do that. We do not have the right equipment for this. Anyway, a bunch of little transistors. Uh, where's my finger? Where's my finger? Help me! Help me! Uh, where the hell am I? Oh, here we are. Oh, Jesus. Where's the viewfinder in this thing? Um, got a metal cap something or other there. Can you read that? No, this just is not working out at all. Oh, there we go. We can get it to focus now. No, can't do that either. Ooh, we had it. We had it. There we are. Can you read that? There you go. Made in Korea. 2N... 3440? Is that a good one? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, there you go. Sorry about the lighting. We're doing the best we can here. But this is a uh, typical solid state amp from the late 80s, early 90s. The output transistors we can probably do. Uh, this guy here. Can you see him? Here we go. 8906 TIP, maybe? 142. And then the other one. 8845 Alpha TIP 147. Does that mean anything to anyone? Some of these old amps um, that have built in chorus, they might have bucket brigade chips. So that's probably. You know, besides the chassis and the cabinet, the most valuable uh, pieces you can find in an amp. But uh, this is not the case with this one. Look at that diode. Holy Jesus. That's a big boy right there. A couple of caps. Black caps. Black caps are the best. Don't ask me why. Just, I don't know. Sounded good to say. Uh, but there she is. I'm sure if you looked online, you can find a schematic. It would be much more helpful than what I'm doing here. All right, anyway, this is all getting gutted out. And, uh, yeah, this is all getting gutted out. All right, let's continue on, and we'll get the, uh, see if we can't. Oh, that back door ain't going anywhere. Got to get rid of the reverb tank, the speaker, and the uh, final four corners. And then uh, remove all this junk out of here. Let's do that. Hey, we got a nice little handle for the parts bin. We need to get a grip on something. All right, uh, tank, corners, speaker. All right, almost there. Okay, the bolts that hold on, or the nuts, not the bolts, the nuts that hold on the speaker use a nine millimeter socket to remove. So we're dealing with silly meters here. Need to remember that. Ah, oh yeah, that's in there. It's been a while since this screw was turned. All right, part spin. Wash has been hammered. Um, gonna need to remove these, which is fine. Usually not that hard to remove. Let's see if I can do it while filming. Probably not, no, definitely not, but yank those out. But uh, that'll make removing the Tolex easier. And uh, we can recycle these in a project somewhere else. Getting all sorts of spare parts with this one. This speaker, as you can see, is pretty damn beefy. Look at the magnet on that thing. And it didn't sound half bad, so. You know, who knows? Who knows? Kind of, sort of. Looks like it was uh, made by Eminence, but I don't know. Probably made in house, right? SLM? St. Louis Music? Do they make their own stuff? But if I had to guess by the basket alone, I would say it was an Eminence. But uh, probably that. Probably is what it says it is. Oh, hey, check this out. PC test by Rick B. This is really awkward to play guitar. What makes this amp great? Am I right? 
Here's our reverb tank. It's an Accutronics. Let's take a look at some numbers up here. Uh, can we read them? Nope. Nope. 1BB2CE1A. Is that what that says? Got some patents. It's the business end. I wouldn't know if this is usable for anything we might be doing with tubes. Because this is obviously driven by solid state stuff. Uh, but we'll throw some uh, meters on the transducers and maybe those readings will mean something to someone. Let's do that. All right. This is the one labeled in. So we'll do uh, something like that. And, come on. There we go. 24 ohms. And we'll do the other side. Let me see if we can't do this. Ooh, get in the damn frame. Right, I guess we can't. And 190-ish measured DC resistance on the out transducer. So there you go. Fascinating. Don't say it's fascinating. No. But it is interesting. All right. To get these thread bushings out from underneath, this is the where the screw goes in to hold the handle holders, handle corners. It's on this side here. Can you see that? Got one right here. We need to get out. That's all we're gonna do. And we can do this one-handed. Grab the screw. Throw it on a couple of times. Grab Mr. Mallet. Bam. Job done. Here she is. Ew. Oh boy. Oh boy. Here we go again with the damn rusty screws. I should make an alcoholic beverage called Rusty Screw. Because I think I'm going to need a half dozen of them to get through this. Alright, so there's a lesson to be learned here. And I think that lesson is... Use stainless steel hardware. Whenever possible. I have no idea how I'm going to do this. Yikes, wish me luck. All right, check this out. So the Tone Church is a three-decker. And there's a driveway on the other side of the house, but there's no doors over there. And so Amazon, UPS, FedEx, they kind of get confused sometimes. You know, we got a deck here with like a door and addresses and, hey, I live here. But they like to leave packages at this door. Right here. Do you think anybody lives in this door here? Really, guys? Well, whatever. They made it. They made it. <clears throat> Alright, so now I've got a dilemma. I can continue messing with these rusted out screws. Or, what I was working on this weekend was uh, King of Tone Pedal. And I did not have enough 10 nanofarad capacitors to uh, finish the project, so I put that what the, put that one to the back burner and started this one. And I got a uh, they were supposed to be here today, but I got a, a notice from Amazon this morning saying, "Sorry, we're running late. We'll see you in a few days." So that's why I started to do the uh, deluxe build here. But this is what I think it is. And it is. Here's our capacitors. So what do we do? Do we continue futzing with these rusty screws? Or do we go back to uh, plan A and finish the uh, King of Tone clone? The Priest of Tone. Decisions, decisions. Alright, we were able to pry this... First corner off. Those two screws came out, no problem. Uh, but these, yeah, these are the ones that were all rusted. So uh, these corners are going in the bin. 
and hopefully I can get these out just by twisting them with a pair of pliers but uh, and unfortunately I cannot seem to locate my vice grip so you know we're going full barbarian on this one this can come out all right here we go all right can you see what I'm doing here uh, I did originally start by trying to uh, use a Dremel tool and just saw in either a Phillips head and that didn't work. I tried to, you know, make a uh, slot for a regular head screwdriver, but it just wasn't having it. The uh, cutoff wheel was getting all fouled up and just wasn't meant to be. But it seems like these are twisting with the uh, pliers here, so we're going to be okay. Just takes a little bit of elbow grease, but we're gonna be just fine. Bam! Job done. Well, job half done. Well, job a quarter done. I was never good at math or fractions. Ugh, yeah! Thundar the Barbarian! Here we go. She's coming. She's protesting, but she's coming. And she squeaks when you screw her. Yeah. Number two. Two more to do. Should be alright. Okay, we got all four of those bottom corners off. All the rusted screws out. Got a little gnarly on this corner, but it's in the back. And when all is said and done, it's going to be retolexed, and I'll probably get some kind of corner protection, at least for the bottom of the cabinet. That was a pain in the neck. Made a huge mess. You know, a $350 investment in a raw cab is starting to sound like a good idea. But uh, we are not independently wealthy around here, so I've got to use elbow grease. $350 worth of elbow grease. All right, what's left? Uh, we'll get the uh, baffle out. We will remove the... Uh, actually, we'll, we'll leave this in for now. We're worried that's putting a new grill cloth is like the last step of this thing. But we're going to take the logo out, take the baffle out, and we'll see how this thing is attached as well. Probably will not be reusing that because it's kind of bogus looking. But... Uh, We'll see. That's a long way away. All right, we got the baffle out. That is secured with four screws into cleats. And this piece right here, which seems like a piece of extruded aluminum, actually. It's probably the, uh, you know, the highest quality piece of this cabinet. But uh, anyway, if you can see that, it's just got uh, a few staples in it. So we'll uh, do something. What are we going to do? Let's try an awl. We will try our awl. Here we go. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. We're just full of puns. Because we're so punny. And get this side off. Bam. Use our knuckles as a rudimentary lever. I know! Look around you. Can you form some sort of rudimentary lathe? Oh. I'll get this staple out. I'm not worried about that right now. There she is. Baffle. Got these nice uh, screws for mounting your speaker. And they serve a dual purpose. They put nice perforated holes into your speaker cone. Very efficient at that. Alright, last step here is put her all the way, and then uh, peel off the Tolex. And it looks like in a lot of places, the sands of time have already begun that step. We're just gonna finish it off. Yeah, this won't be hard at all. It's just peeling right up. Yeah, this will be fine. When you're doing this, you just wanna be careful on the edges of the wood, especially particle board. Because if you're not careful, it will start to tear the wood all apart. So, we'll take our time. And we'll do the best job we can. 
you know, if you mangle the uh, the wood, you will see wrinkles and dimples and stuff when you re-tolex it. So we want to keep the cabinet as nice and smooth as possible. But uh, yeah, there's not much to it. Just get underneath it, grab a corner, start yanking. All right, I'll check in after this is done. All right, the cabinet is all squared away. Um, it's drying right now. I just spray painted it, so I don't want to touch it. But all we basically did was, once we peeled off the Tolex, uh, we just took a wire brush and just hit it all around, get rid of like the excess clumps of glue, excess chips of wood, all the junk off of there, then hit it with some coarse sandpaper. Uh, where they screwed the corners in, uh, it looks like they didn't use pilot holes. They just blasted them in there. So there was some, uh, you know, it was bubbling up a little bit around the hole. So we just took a file. Flatten that all out. And then once that was all said and done, we got these hand brushes here. I got on Amazon. And because it's particle board, we really don't want to get it wet. So we just cleaned off all the extra dust and stuff. And then we hit it with some, uh, what was it, Krylon 2-in-1 um, primer paint, gloss black. Hit it all around, and now we're letting it dry. And, uh, you know, I like to do the cabinet first, get that out of the way, and... You know, because it's going to take several days, if not several weekends, to do this project. And that, that's a good time for the uh, the paint to dry and harden and cure. So when we go to apply the the contact cement for the Tolex, it doesn't, you know, the paint doesn't come up and get all everything yucky. But uh, these are great. Uh, these are great for actually just cleaning the outside of your amplifier if it has Tolex with some of this stuff. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. McGuire's Convertible Top Cleaner. Just hose down your Tolex. Give it a brush at one of these and, you know, your amplifier will look brand new. Uh, I'll put links for that crap in the bottom. Uh, baffle board was plywood, so I gave that a bath. Ran out of spray paint, so I'll order up some spray paint and spray that. But you know what spray paint looks like. We really don't need to show that. So all that is left is to remove the PCB and... Everything that's hanging on to this chassis and take it from there. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Uh, it's got one of these. You can see it just kind of um, strain relief. These are a pain in the butt. Somebody needs to invent something better. But I think the easiest, best way to get these out is, I don't know, squeeze it and push it. With a pair of pliers. I know they make a special tool for it, but I'm not paying that kind of money for a single-use special tool. Oh, that wasn't that bad. Pops right out. All right, so we'll unplug all this crap, and then we'll unscrew the PC boards and take all the knobs off. I thought we were going to have a bunch of uh, knobs, but if you can see, the, the shafts of these potentiometers are knurled and very, very thin, so... That's for a very particular kind of PCB mount potentiometer that we don't really use here. But uh, you never know. Never know when you might need that. All right, let me grab the screwdrivers and uh, get this PCB out. All right, she's all tore up. This is the underside of the board. It looks pretty nice. You know, all the solder, solder work looks very good. Probably done by a machine, a pick and placer. Whoa, what happened here? I don't know if that's rework or, you know, I detected that at some point. Did a little repair, or if that's rework at the factory, who knows? Look at this. A little bit of cookage right there. I got these big old 10 watt ceramic resistors right here and a couple of caps. I can tell you what part of the circuit that's for. I don't know much about solid state stuff. But uh, there she is. Not a whole lot of usable stuff on here, but we'll keep her around. Here's the chassis. I think we're just going to hit her with some sandpaper and then whack her with some Krylon just to clean it up. hole for the power transformer for the most part cut we'll probably have to uh, elongate that to fit the new transformer some nice vents oh, got some 
insect life. Ugh, that's nasty. I got the transformer. I want to use one of these transformers from a solid state amp that I've torn apart to make like the mother of all pedal power supplies. But that's a project for another day. And we got some uh, spare parts. Hey, Tom Priest, Back to the Future here. Uh, it's the next day and I haven't started editing the video yet, but the paint is all dry. So I figured I'd give her a shot so you can see what she looks like. I should grab this sticker, but I won't. Uh, yep, just uh, put a coat of white on there to make it look a little bit nicer and to uh, cover the bare metal, the inside with bare metal, as we saw. So that'll be a little bit better kind of ham at the paint job in there, but that'll be fine. The only... Um, really visible surface is going to be the bottom and maybe the back. The front's going to have a, an aluminum faceplate when all is said and done. And then we got this black hole right here. Let's get some light in there. Here's the cab. That looks much better. And I don't think I mentioned, um, you know, it's good to paint a cab when doing a project like this, recycling an old amplifier for a new amplifier. Um, you know, this thing was built in, you know, late 80s, early 90s, and it's seen a basement or two in its day. And so just hitting it with a coat of spray paint will seal in any basement funk or any other kind of funk. And uh, if you have like a, uh, you know, a nice vintage amplifier that's been maltreated and it's got a little bit of funkiness to it, you can get some clear acrylic spray paint, you know. Uh, I would use gloss or satin and just, you know, give it a little coat. And that should seal the funk in and keep the funk to itself. Because you don't want to get the funk out. Or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but there she is. Alright, let's get back to the uh, regularly scheduled program. Alright, I guess that's going to about do it for this video. The teardown video, part one. Need to order some paint. And just do some other stuff. But there's no need for you to see that. That'll be... Boring as hell. Even more boring than preceding however many minutes it's been. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I had fun. And I'm looking forward to uh, putting this together. But uh, we're going to jump back over to the King of Tone pedal, I think, uh, because the parts are in. So you'll probably see that video before you see this one. Either way, thanks for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for one of these if you give me one. And we'll see you next time. Rock on. Here's Thunder! The Barbarian! Done!